Hi, I'm Australian young adult author Will Kostakis, and it's my pleasure today to interview Will Kostakis for Bookface in a video I hope will not come off as desperate and self-serving. Will, thanks so much for joining us. To start with, tell us about your new novel, Rebel Gods. So we started off with last year's monuments that saw Connor, Sally and Lockie skipping school to find the ancient gods that are buried under different Sydney high schools. And now we have Rebel Gods, which takes up about a month later, and our three heroes are wrestling with everything that happened on their adventure, and also facing off against two gods that may or may not want to bring about the end of the world. Rebel Gods is your first sequel. How did you find that process? It was really tricky to write a sequel, I'm not gonna lie. It didn't help that we're living in Hellscape 2020 and all the things that I usually did to get inspired to write, I couldn't do. And so I was writing and also wrestling with the fact that my brain felt like it was melting. But I'm so glad that I got through it and I'm so glad that I have this book at the end of that process because the thing about sequels is you can build on all those unanswered questions and all those things that you teased in the first book. And now that I've had a taste of writing sequels, I want to start imagining bigger stories that stretch over numerous books. What drew you to fantasy? I've always been a big consumer of fantasy stories, whether they were novels by Pratchett and Tolkien or video games like The Legend of Zelda. And so I was always itching to write a fantasy novel because in the past I've only really written strictly contemporary realistic novels and I was drawn to fantasy because after two really heavy contemporary novels in a row I wanted to tap into that teenage version of myself that would you know stare off into the distance and imagine this sprawling fantasy novel taking place on Sydney's rooftops. And what was your approach to world building? It's the same way that I approach world building in my contemporary novels. I kept it simple. I only told readers the things that I felt were absolutely essential. And nine times out of ten, I stripped out a lot of the description and a lot of the world building because I often find that the world building is for the author to get comfortable in the space. Sometimes the story doesn't need all of that information. And so I used test readers and my editor to figure out what information was vital and what wasn't. Finding that balance was a bit tricky, but we got there in the end. It was really exciting to read a fantasy novel that was jam-packed with richly diverse and queer characters whose stories and arcs didn't revolve around their queerness. How did you approach the process of creating those characters? Well. Connor is a gay Greek kid. I don't know where I got that. It's just my, you know, my imagination is so great. No, <laughs> look, I did draw on myself to create Connor because look, as much as I loved consuming fantasy novels, very rarely did I read fantasy stories that were set in Sydney and absolutely never did those fantasy protagonists look like me. And so when I approached writing monuments, I, approached it knowing that I wanted to fill that absence that had been there for that teenage version of me. And so Connor is, or at least he started off, being a little like me. When it came to Sally and Lockie, it came down to just reflecting the diversity that is in our world. It's, you know, I don't want to get a pat on the back for reflecting the world as it is. You know, there are Aboriginal kids like Lockie. There are people like Sally and I was very mindful of creating diverse characters and letting them have identities that weren't just their queerness or their ethnicity because I know as a gay Greek guy that a lot of my experiences and my perspective on those experiences are informed by my identity. But at the same time, I'm still me and I still experience things outside of that. What do you hope readers take away from Rebel Gods when they finish reading it? I hope that when they put down these books, teen readers feel empowered to seize their moment and change the world. You know, 
I have had the fortune of getting to tour Australia for the past 12 years and meet Australia's teenagers and I am constantly blown away by the generosity of spirit and their optimism for the future and I honestly can't wait for them to seize control of the world. So yeah, I just want teenagers to know that they are seen, their opinions are valid, their experiences are valid and that they are never too young to make positive changes in the world. Australia has such a vibrant YA community. What are some of your favourite recent reads? I'm a huge lover of Australian YA and two novels that I've absolutely loved uh, these past couple of weeks were Ellie Marnie's None Shall Sleep. Now, I think Ellie Marnie is one of Australia's finest crime writers and None Shall Sleep is her finest novel ever. The other novel that I've just finished and it is still sort of, I'm still wrapping my head around it, is Lily Wilkinson's The Erasure Initiative. And Lily, just like Ellie, is going from strength to strength. You're one of the ambassadors for Australia Reads this year. Could you give us a hint of what to expect come November? I am thrilled to be an Australia Reads ambassador this year. And as much as I want to tell you all the exciting things we have planned to celebrate and to get Australia reading, I'm not allowed to. What I can say is I'm releasing another book this year to celebrate Australia Reads. It is called The Greatest Hit. It's a novella and it was written during and largely inspired by that first period of lockdown and I cannot wait for you to read it and fall in love with Tessa as much as I have. Congratulations on publishing Rebel Gods. Can you let us know what's next for Will Kostakis? Now that I'm done with The Greatest Hit, I have started thinking about and plotting out my next novel. It's going to be something really special, but it's in that awkward stage where if I tell you about it, it's probably going to change a hundred times between now and release. So all I can say is I'm really excited to be writing it and I'm taking a break from fantasy to go back to my contemporary realism roots. Thank you so much for your time, Will. And Rebel Gods, Monuments and Will's other novels are available from Bookface now.